Okay, hi guys. This is my first time ever doing a live and it's Sunday morning so I don't think anyone's gonna be like logging on or anything. Um, I'm doing a live just one to test it out because I've never done it and I'm considering doing it in the future. Um, and second because I actually don't know how seeing 101. I actually got back home last night like 12 hours ago. Got home, ate dinner yesterday morning like 7 a.m. I drove back here to Maryland, so that was a 12 hour drive. <laughs> and the whole drive, hi Jade, oh my gosh. Um, I'm just talking about the fact that I saw 101 because I'm like really giddy. Hi Sam, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, the whole drive, I was just thinking about the concert and I came with my brother and I just kept telling him like different things that happened at the show like oh Jisung did this, oh Guanlin said this, oh Woojin said this and it was um I've been so giddy ever since the concert happened and so yeah I just want to talk about it because I, I feel like I won't be able to stop talking about it for like months but um I'm really excited. So uh they performed a lot of music because it was three hours. So from like Produce 101 era, they did like Never and Nayana, and then they did a lot of songs from the first album. For the second album songs, they did a lot of like remixes, like Kako Shippo is my favorite song, but they did like a ballad version. Um, and then they all had solo stages, which were so cool. Like it was just like incorporated into the like 101 stages that one member one member at the beginning or end would do like his own solo bit singing or dancing or something and for DJ for Jisung obviously he did his DJ stage and that was the most exciting thing um I went with two friends to the concert I went with Oh Sung He's GF here on YouTube I met up with her the day of the concert and then I also went with my friend Katie who is the friend I went to see Monster X with or one of the friends I went to see Monster X with. Yes, Daniel is that good looking. Like <laughs> I know he gets a lot of hype, but I could like he is yeah, in person he is really really attractive. The thing is he's also really really silly. And that's what I find charming about him, the fact that he's so silly. Like he had towels like to dry themselves off in between the performances he was like pretending they were nunchucks and stuff like that and he kept doing like like f funny dances out of nowhere in between <laughs> yes being a visual is a talent <laughs> uh... <laughs> um he got like a lot of cheers obviously since he's one of the really popular members so i like didn't go as hard for him, but I do love him, so I was like copping and stuff. Um, for Jisung though, when they did their ending like comments, it like the camera turned to Jisung and it was his turn to speak and the crowd suddenly got really, really loud and they wouldn't stop cheering, including me, because I like want Jisung to know that like he has like big supporters, you know? So I was like, woo, -hoo -hoo, like continuously. And then the whole crowd was like that, and like Daniel was the one that started laughing and was like making fun of Jisung, like, look, they all love you. And yeah, he got the longest and loudest cheer out of all 11 for the like closing thing. And that made me really happy, like really, really happy. Um, next to me, there were three Japanese fans, and the one right next to me was also a Jisung fan. Yes, okay, so I'll answer Sam's question. The crowd was actually really... I got there like 30 minutes before the show started, so I just went in and went into my seat. And the crowd... I think there was a good mix of who like, their favorites were and stuff like that. Although in the balcony, I think to like the left, there was a whole crowd of people going. <laughs> there was like a whole crowd of people that were there specifically for Jihoon. And that was really cool that they were all sitting together and they were like the Jihoon corner. And they got noticed by Guanlin actually. And Guanlin told Jihoon, like, look up there. And they were distracted because the other members were talking about something else. And then they were like, Jihoon, what are you looking at? And he was like, pointed up at them. And Guanlin said, Jihoon country. <laughs> um, but yeah, there were people with slogans and stuff and signs for like all the members. Um, I saw 
Jaehwan and Sungwoon, I saw a lot of people with stuff for them, and Daniel. Um, for Jisung, before the show started, I had only seen one person walking around with a shirt with Jisung on it. But, like, he got the most cheers, so there must be a lot of Jisung's answer. I'll answer Sam's question now of how he became my bias. So, it was during Produce 101 when the episode for the first um, group evaluations came out. So, it was like, Jisung was on the team that was covering 2PM's 10 out of 10. And they were, they were picking the person to be in the middle, and they wanted someone cute. And all the other boys were like, Jisung, Jisung. And Jisung was the oldest out of all the boys, so he was like, no, I can't do it, I'm too old for that. And they were like, but you're literally the cutest one. And then they had him like sing out the part, like the line that the center person gets. And I was like, yeah, he is the cutest out of this group of like five or six dudes. And he like nervously took it. And then I think it's the next episode where they actually showed the performance. And he did like really, really good. And I was like, this guy needs more confidence. Like, he's really good. And then after that, I was, like, really supporting him. Because originally, I was only supporting the New East boys. <laughs> and then suddenly, I found myself really caring about Jisung. Like, wishing him well throughout all the, like, missions and stuff. And by the... I don't, know, I don't remember what it's called. But when they had, like, the teams when they covered Sonagi by IOI, by then I was officially like G-some trash. I was like, this man owns my heart. <laughs> um, yeah. And I love, it was partly his singing, it was partly his, I don't know, his aura on stage, I guess. Um, seeing him in person confirms it, oh my gosh. I tried to look at like whoever was singing you know, like in the songs, whoever was singing main or whoever was um, dancing main, but like I kept looking at Jisung. <laughs> I kept looking at him. Like during his DJ stage, he actually had two members do like solo dances. I think it was Jin Young and Sungwoon. And so I tried to look at them because it was their solo stage. They were dancing. No, it was Gwanlin. I'm sorry. It was Gwanlin and Sungwoon. And so I tried to look at them because it was their solo stage. But the thing is, Jisung was in the middle with his DJ, with his turntable. And so I kept looking at him, <laughs> and during all the performances, I tried to look at like, because for my seat, I actually really loved my seat. I had a really good view of all 11 and like all the dance formation, which is something I really wanted to see, you know, like, so I tried to look at like everything. I tried to look at like everyone, or I tried to look at like the center, but he kept grabbing my eyes and that could just be my bias, but like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was so smiley. Like anytime I looked over him during their like um like while they were speaking in between songs, anytime I looked over at him he was smiling and laughing at the other members whenever they tried to say stuff in English. Or whenever they were like like when Daniel was doing silly things, he'd be laughing so hard. Um <laughs> uh, sorry, I feel like I'm really jumbled because I'm just really excited. I try to be calm because I have a whole bunch of family over. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else to say. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We're... <laughs> but yeah, he was... <laughs> oh gosh. I guess I am. <laughs> I'm just so happy. Like, I am so happy. I have felt content since I left the concert. Like, the drive was really stressful because it was, like, so far and through, like, the Midwest, which, like, it stresses me out because it looks so empty, but I would keep thinking about the concert and then I'd suddenly forget. Like, I'd suddenly forget the stress of the driving and just think about, like, oh my gosh, I saw 101 in person. Uh, yeah, um, I took my, uh, Jisung and Baba banner, this one. So yeah, um, I, while he was doing his like comment, I was holding it up really high and I don't know if he saw it, but I hope he did, or I hope he saw lots of other banners. From where I was sitting, I couldn't see decent banners, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, 
Ji Sung was so good with the fan service. He literally went up and down the most out of all the members. Um, but all the members were being really good about like in between songs looking at everyone. And then for Wanna Be My Baby, that's when they were all definitely focused on like the crowd. And they were, 101 was so good about paying attention to the second floor too. Like they were so good about it. Like I've been to lots of concerts with like tiered things and like sometimes at the end they'll be like, and the balconies too, or and the other floors too. But 101 was really, out of all the concerts I've been to, the best about that. Like, they continuously were like, second floor too, and stuff. Um, that was really good. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm trying, I feel like I have so much to talk about. Um, oh, I was talking about the fans next to me. I want to talk about that. Wait, did they sell goods at the concert? How was it hanging out with internet friends in real life? Okay, um, they did sell goods at the concert, but I'm very disappointed with the goods they sold. It was the light stick, because like you need that for the concert, and then it was also the photo essay, and what else was it? Was the photo? Oh, and the album, and the album was being sold for thirty dollars each, which is ridiculous <laughs> like thirty dollars for just the album that, that's a lot of money um and then the photo essay is a good that had been released months back and you cannot and it was being sold for like sixty dollars and you can get that for cheaper literally anywhere else and also it had already been released so it wasn't really a concert good you know like neither the photo essay nor the album were concert goods so that was disappointing yeah, it is outrageous. I was very disappointed because in Seoul they had so many goods. They had pins, they had wall scrolls, they had, you know, the photo card sets, they had the voice key rings. Um, I actually got some of those goods from a friend that went to the Seoul concert. Like, I had her buy them for me, and I will show those in a video uh, sometime soon. I haven't edited anything. I have so many videos to post that I haven't um, worked on. But like the goods there were so cool and here we got none of that. Yeah, the prices were also dumb because thirty dollars for an album for me is just ridiculous. Like I like I understand albums cost more when you get them in person because it's like they have to factor in like shipping them and stuff, you know. But thirty dollars is ridiculous. Like yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't buy the light stick, which is why I just I took a banner because I actually not that into light sticks. <laughs> like I don't know. I don't. I'm too awkward at concerts to move a light stick. But I was not awkward to like jump around with a banner. <laughs> well, if anyone's curious, this is the image. It's from when he got his ranking at during Produce 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, I do have one video of the concert because um. Security was actually very, very, very strict. Like, they had sent out emails everywhere in the venue. It was like, no photography, no phone use, nothing, nothing, nothing. And um, so I was like, okay, I probably won't be able to get any video. And when it started, though, I didn't see a lot of people getting, like, a lot of people were recording, and I didn't see a lot of people getting their phones taken away or anything. So Energetic was starting, so I figured I'd, like, film. And then, like, halfway through Energetic, I saw this buff, security guard looked dead at me and then I was like oh and I put my phone away because I didn't want to get in trouble you know and then I just kept my phone down but then like three songs later I was like I wonder if security is still out there and I looked back and he was right behind me <laughs> and I that made me feel a little bad like because like I did get caught doing something bad and I felt a little bad because now he was like right behind me thinking I was gonna try to put my, bring my phone out again um and then I also felt bad because then all the people in front of me, because I was in the back row of my section, all the people in front of me, since he was right behind me, he could see them and he would like tap them and flash his light and be like, put that away. And so they couldn't get any video because he stood behind me for like an hour. Um, <laughs> but I do have two minutes of energetic, which um, which I'm I'm grateful I at least have that. Because, like, I don't actually like recording during concerts because I do like enjoying it myself more to get, like, more into it and to enjoy it more. But I did want something just, like, for memory, you know, just to remember how close I was, what my view was like, 
and everything. Um, but yeah, but security was strict. They were strict. And I had met up, oh, so now I'll answer the question about meeting friends in real life. So Thursday before the concert, I met up with my friend who I know through Instagram, and I went with her to the Shiny fan meet. She lives in Illinois. So I met up with her Thursday because it was her birthday the day before. And it was cool to see her again, because after Shiny, I really didn't think I'd see her again. Um, and that was really nice. And she actually hasn't been online that much, so it was really nice to see her in person and catch up. Um, and then... And she was telling me that Rosemont wouldn't be strict because um, they weren't strict for Shiny and they haven't been strict for any of the concerts she's been to. She's been to a lot of concerts there. But um, yeah. And then Friday, I met up with Oh Sung Hee's GF from YouTube. And um, that was really cool because um, we met around the time of Produce 101, I think. Like, I think that was the time we met last summer. Last spring, I mean. Right? Spring? I think it was April of last year that 101 started, right? And um, it was cool to meet her, too, because um, I think I met her through Instagram, and then she started a YouTube, and so we were able to talk a little more, and um, it was really cool getting to meet her and stuff, and I'm sure she's going to watch this at some point. Um, it was really cool meeting you, um, and it was so much fun. It's okay, so meeting internet friends in real life is weird because it's, it's weird because um, it's like I'm so comfortable with them already, like online, you know, like I talk to them often, I share with them stuff not just about the artists we like, but also like like school and like other things. And so we've shared a lot about ourselves. And then when we meet in person, it doesn't feel any different like it's it's the same it's just like instead of texting out things it's saying it in person um so that that's like weird to me because i would like you would think it'd be a little awkward but it's actually since there's someone i've i'm really close to it's really easy to talk to them and it's i'm really comfortable talking to them and stuff like, yeah, like, it was, like, Oh Sung East GF and I weren't awkward at all. Like, as soon as we saw each other, started talking, and it was fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely really cool, really cool. The other friend, Katie, that I went with, um, she actually, I met her through a mutual friend, one of my high school friends that goes to college with her. And she literally introduced us just because we both like K-pop. And, um... It was a rough start because like we liked different groups and stuff. It wasn't until Produce 101 that we actually became close because that was like the first group we both knew we had in common. Like we do have a lot of groups in common that we like, but at the time like when we first met, we didn't and um like when we first met, she was a big SM Rookies fan. And I was like not there for SM Rookies, but then as soon as NCT 127 debuted, I was all for NCT. So now like a group we, we both really like a lot is NCT. Um, but yeah, so but for her it wasn't until Produce 101 that we really became close. And um, the first time we met was the Monster X concert. And then that same summer she visited my friend, my high school friend, so I got to see her then. And then I visited her and my friend in their school over the spring for spring break that's what I did I went to visit them and then it was cool to see her this is my fourth time seeing her at the 101 concert so that's really cool so she's like an online friend because I had never met her in person like I didn't meet her in person originally but um her since it's my fourth time seeing her it's I feel like I see her a lot <laughs> um yeah Oh, I do have, I don't know what else, I have, I don't know how to, man, I don't know how you guys do lives. Like, I am such a, like, scatterbrain, so I don't know what else to talk about. But I do want to talk about, at the concert when I got in, they were handing out, like, these things. So they're just, like, little tags made of, like, index cards. But someone did, like, watercolor art, and I don't know if this is reflecting or not. But um, it says 2B1, one of, you know, like, 101's, like, tagline and, like, one of their 
yeah, I think for one of their albums, it was like their tagline. And um, so this was really nice. Um, and I put this here to remind me that during the concert, it was like they they had opportunities to talk about like what they had experienced in Chicago, what they were thinking about the crowd and stuff. But they did start with like a scripted message and they had Dehui say it. Like they would be like, tonight, 101 and 101 is gonna become one and like at the end he was like do you guys think we became one and like I know it was scripted because Dehui was being so awkward about it like he seemed a little bit like embarrassed as he said it and he didn't speak as comfortably because like he does know English very well so he usually speaks very comfortably but his like intonation was kind of weird probably because he was like reading off a script you know or like reading his memorized lines um, so that was a little weird at the concert that like they kept saying stuff about becoming one and stuff and about promises they were like remember the first day we met which I'm assuming is produce 101 and they'd be like let's promise to support each other even after 101 and stuff right um, yeah that was a little weird but it was cute you know it's corny stuff but it's cute <laughs> Um, I don't know what else to talk about. I feel like I could be here talking for hours, but I don't want to bore everyone. Talking for hours, it's already been 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that happened. Oh my gosh. Um, how was the drive? The drive there was tough because I couldn't sleep the night before because I was so excited. I'm always like that. Whenever I go on a trip, I can't sleep the night before. So I left with one hour of sleep, and that was terrible. Um, I left at midnight. Eastern time and by like 7 a.m. I had to pull over at a rest stop and I tried to sleep more and I got like an hour of sleep and then couldn't sleep more after that <laughs> and then kept driving got to Chicago like 12:30 or 1 in Chicago time whatever that is central time maybe um, and so I was really, really tired. <laughs> and I still had to drive there because I got to Chicago with my brother and we got like looked at some stuff and then we went to visit my friend from the Shiny family. Uh, she lives in like 20 minutes from like downtown Chicago and we had to drive to her. And then with her, my brother really wanted to try to eat dish pizza so she and I went out with us to, to do that. And so I had to drive us there because she doesn't drive because, let me tell you guys now, do not drive in Illinois. Illinois is the dumbest state. Their road systems are ridiculous. Their toll system is ridiculous. Literally, go by foot, go by train, do not drive in Illinois. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. I hate it. I am a very cautious driver. <laughs> I am very scared of driving. But I had to be aggressive in Illinois or else I would never get anywhere. Like, I had to aggressively change lanes, I had to aggressively, <laughs> it was a mess. I I felt like I would never get anywhere if I didn't drive like that, but I'm still scared at the fact that I drove like that. Like, uh, it was a mess, a mess, a mess, a mess. I really don't recommend driving there. I really am never going to Illinois again if I have to drive. Never, 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 never. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I had to keep driving to my friend, drive us to the restaurant where we're gonna go to then drop her back off at her house, then drive to our hotel because we couldn't check into the hotel till three. So, you know, we hung out with my friend for a bit, got to the hotel like four, and then I had to go pick up my friend Katie at the airport. So I had to drive there. Um, and driving to the airport's always not fun because you know, it's like a bunch of lanes and you have to be in the lane to pick up or drop off or whatever. Like, I just hate driving to airports. So that was, um, yeah. So I did a lot of driving, and after I picked up my friend, I picked her up like 5.30, got to the hotel like 6. I talked to her for a bit, um, you know, just catching up, and then at 8 p.m. I went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> um, I was really, really tired. And then I slept until 6.40 a.m. Friday. Um, my brother woke me up because he was actually, he got sick from the pizza. He had eaten leftovers that night and that got him sick. Um, 
But yeah, the drive was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, but the drive back from Chicago was better. It was definitely better because we left the hotel at like 7 a.m. And so it was like daytime and I had gotten not a good sleep because the concert ended at like 11 something and we didn't go to sleep till like 1 because we were so excited. Um, so I only slept like... And I had to take Katie back to the airport at 5 a.m. So I only got like four hours of sleep. But I really wanted to get home. So we just left at 7 after eating breakfast and packing and everything. And the drive back, I was telling myself, like, I want to get home. I want to get home. I want to get home. And I did that one without any stops. Like, I would stop for gas and to use the bathroom, but no other stops. So we got here. It still took us 12 hours because it's supposed to be like 10 hours if there's if you go nonstop, but it was still 12 hours because there was traffic once we re reached um, Pennsylvania. And I just realized because I have an aunt from Pennsylvania over right now, she says it's because of 4th of July. Fireworks are illegal in Maryland, but they're legal in Pennsylvania. So apparently everyone's in Pennsylvania buying fireworks. That's why I had to sit through two hours of traffic. <laughs> um, so close to my home state. But... Uh, yeah but the drive back wasn't i was a lot better since i had sleep and since it was daytime because driving up at night was kind of scary like driving through pennsylvania at night is really scary because i'm scared of pennsylvania because <laughs> of the mountains and stuff and how rural it is um but yeah i'm good now like as soon as i got home last night ate slept and right now i feel i feel totally fine now totally fine um a little weird just because I'm still like I guess like on the like concert high like I'm really really giddy <laughs> but yeah um what else can I talk about oh I keep mentioning I don't finish talking about the fans beside me the one right beside me was also a Jisung fan so that made the concert a whole lot better um she couldn't really speak English very well so we didn't talk much but when they were like introducing themselves at the beginning, like after a couple songs and they introduced themselves. My goal for the concert was to be as loud as possible for Jisung. So for everything else, I was screaming, but not like at the top of my lungs or anything, but for Jisung I was, cause I really, you know, wanted to go all out for him. So when it was his turn, you know, I started screaming really like 10 times louder than I was screaming for all the other members. And so she looked at me and like, she knew, you know, <laughs> we both liked the same person. And um, so then thereafter, you know, we would both be cheering together for Jisung and for his stage, her and the two other people with her, like for Jisung's stage, the other two people were like normally moving their light stick, but then her and I were both like on the same beat, like jumping and having our life to <laughs> Jisung's DJ performance. It was, I'm really happy I had a Jisung stand beside me. Like, I was really hoping I would have a Jisung stand close to me because that would hype me up more because my friends, we were all separated. Like, Oh Sung Hee's GF was like in the section to my left and then Katie was in the section to my right in front. So she had a really good seat, by the way. She could like see the members really close up. But um, I was really happy I had a fellow Jisung fan beside me because that really hyped me up. It made me less embarrassed to cheer for him, just to have someone else also cheering for him. And also for his stage, it hyped me up. Because the people like in the very front were all like jumping and stuff, but like in the other sections, people were a little, like they were still jumping and stuff, but like, I don't know. I just, I felt really hyped with her next to me and I'm really happy about that. Um, so fucking uh, this is live, go away. Oh, Yes, it is! Really? Yes! Shut up. <laughs> I apologize for that. This is... <laughs> My brother says hi and sorry. <laughs> He's telling me to record somewhere else, but like I literally have nowhere else to record. I told you guys I have family home. I'm gonna read Jade's question. She's asking, were you close? And I heard about the ticket sales for the Chicago show. So I was in, sorry, I had to do that. I was in P2, right? So it's, um, 
how do I explain it? It's like the second block of seats at the Rosemont. There's like the first block of seats and then like the second block of seats. I was there in the very last row. Um, I would say I'm close because all of Ro all of the Rosemont Theater is very intimate. Like everywhere is close because it's such a small theater. And I would say I was close. Like I think I was close. Like when they came out, I was close enough that I could like see Ji Sung's face very well and see all his expressions very well. So I think I was close, but like I could see all 11 members, you know, like my friend Katie up in front, she sort of could only see, you know, like when they were all together, she could see all of them like farther in the middle of the stage. But when they came up close, she could only see, you know, like the member up close. Um, I liked my seat. I think it was a good seat. I'm really happy with it. Um, and ticket sales. Oh my gosh, this video could be like hours long because of the ticket sales. So the venue was originally going to be Allstate Arena, but they didn't sell. I'm guessing it's because they didn't sell enough tickets. They changed the venue to the Rosemont Theater. And so we were all going to be refunded our money and we had to rebuy tickets. But the ridiculous thing was that the day they announced that, right, they said our, our money would be refunded within seven to ten days. But the rebuying started like in four days. So that was ridiculous. And it was really annoying because the prices too were kept the same. Actually, no, because before the tickets ranged from like, I think the most expensive ticket was 250 to 60 being the cheapest at the Allstate Arena. And then for Chicago, for the Rosemont Theater, they changed it to 250 still being VIP, the first three rows at the Rosemont Theater. But then the balcony seats would cost what P3 cost, which was like $90 or something, which is ridiculous. Like for shiny, the balcony seats cost $60. And I think, okay, this is a comparison. My ticket for 101 was in the same block as my ticket was for shiny. And that ticket was 135, I think total, like with all the fees and stuff. And for 101, my ticket total with all the fees and stuff was 200. 45 that's more than a hundred dollars difference like that is ridiculous they really overcharged us so the ticketing was a mess because first of all it was unfair and it was like taking advantage of fans because they knew we wanted to go to the concert and we were all willing to pay these prices although the venue honestly wasn't I don't want to say it wasn't worth because as long as I see 101 I guess I was willing to pay that but it's just annoying because, like, my friend who's been to a lot of Rosemont concerts said, like, she's never paid that price for a, con for a ticket like that. Um, but the other thing that was really annoying was that for the Allstate Arena, we all had P1, P2, all the way to P5, right? So supposedly they sent us individual codes depending on your tier of ticket for when you bought tickets at the Rosemont Theater to get, like, your corresponding tier. For my friend Katie, she had P1, along with Oh Sung Hee's GF, so they had the same code. Oh Sung Hee's GF was not able to buy a ticket. It would not show her any tickets on her, because there were set dates too, on her set date to buy her ticket, it didn't show anything. But for Katie, after she had bought hers, it kept showing her tickets. So then Katie had to buy Oh Sung Hee's GF to, Oh Sung Hee's GF's ticket for her. And then... On my day, my day was like two days after them because I was P2, my code didn't work. I put the code in and it wouldn't give me any tickets. And I knew tickets were available because people were tweeting that they were getting tickets. And I was like, where is, why can't I buy a ticket? Katie had to buy me a ticket as well. And she actually, I, no, I think I was P3. That's why I was two days later. And she actually ended up buying me a P2 ticket, which isn't what I was, like, I wasn't supposed to have that at all, but like, I couldn't have access to the P3 tickets at all. And neither could she because her code was like P2. So yeah, I don't know. It was it was honestly a mess. Like it was stressful the first day when we couldn't get Oh Sung Hee's GF's ticket. And then it was stressful again my day when we couldn't get my ticket. And poor Katie had to buy all three tickets for us. And it was, it was a mess. And there are people who, like this happened to like lots of people. Um, some people, after P3, people who had P4 and P5, they didn't get any code. And they had to buy the day, like, regular sales began. 
so that was also like unfortunate and I don't know <laughs> I don't know the venue was pretty filled next to me the next like two or three seats there was no one um and that's also why security like was could see better <laughs> behind me and stuff because there was no one next to me but um on this side on the other side I had the other like the Jisung fan and her friends but on this side I didn't have anyone um the venue looked pretty full to me I had like my friend had checked before the concert like what seats were available and there were like a handful of seats available still like 10 that we could like count and so it seemed pretty full and the like the balcony the whole front was like full so I don't know about the back but the whole front was full of people um yeah it was a mess it was a mess but I was like really bitter about it too up until the concert but now that the concert's over and I saw my boys I'm li I'm like better like I'm not as I'm still annoyed like that was all an annoying situation a frustrating situation an unfair situation honestly for fans but I saw them and so like right now I'm only focused on that the fact that I was able to see them luckily and I'm back home safe Okay, so I'm gonna read something Sam had asked. Oh, hi Ashley! I'm sorry, I was talking so I didn't notice. Do you think that a lot of people fail to rebuy tickets because of the price increase? I think that might have been a thing too. I think someone, I think I did see people that like, because 101's also going to the two KCONs. I did see some people saying like since they got their money back for 101, or since they were going to get their money back for the 101 tickets, I did see some people that didn't rebuy tickets because they said they would just instead use that money to go to one of the K-Cons. That, yeah. I think the price increase did affect. Also because like the people that had bought P4 and P5 tickets had bought the $60, $70 tickets. And now the tickets all cost like near 100 once you factor in all the fees and stuff. So there probably were people that like could no longer afford to go unfortunately. It's a mess. This happened also, like, this was announced right after 101 had their company switch. Because company had been managed by YMC ever since 101 was, like, decided up until June. They were, they were managed by YMC Entertainment. And now they're managed by, like, from middle of June onward until they end, they're now being managed by Swing Entertainment. So literally right after that right after I read articles about that switch the day after was when like the venue changed for three of the four US venues <laughs> I think it I don't know I don't I feel like that has something to do with it but it could also have just been ticket sales but the fact that it was like like I said they gave us four days to rebuy tickets and so people didn't get their refund until after that was another issue some people didn't get their refunds until after they had rebought the ticket, and so some people didn't have money to buy tickets because the money they had spent originally was all the money they had, you know? So they didn't have money to rebuy it. I don't know. It was just greed because they know 101 is a limited edition group. Like after December, we're never gonna see 101 like this again. So they're the reason they kept the prices like this is definitely to take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact that we know this is our only chance to see them like this. Yeah, It's just taking advantage of fans, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I guess now I'll just say random things that pop into my head. Um, <laughs> I want to think of happy things again. <laughs> During the like closing comments um a really cute thing so like you know lots of members would try to say like random english things and stuff um daniel was like chicago you guys are lit and that was really funny to me because like it's always funny when they try to use like trendy and like slang words and stuff but it was just funny because like to me daniel is such a like dork so him saying lit was like funny it was really funny it's like me trying to say lit like I say it and I laugh at myself when I say it like yeah so that was funny and then 
Wujin, his comment was so funny. The first thing he said was pego payo, which is I'm hungry. <laughs> and the translator like was laughing as he translated, I'm hungry. <laughs> and then he said, I think I played too hard with you guys and now I'm hungry. But this was good too. Like the show was a lot of fun and stuff. But um, you know, he's a kid. He's like 18, 19, like he's a kid, so <laughs> that was cute. Um I'm trying to think of what else people said. Uh Jisung was I was talking about like deep dish pizza. Like ever since he knew deep dish pizza was a thing, he wanted to go to Chicago. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Um, and he said that Chicago was like fun and stuff. Um, Songu, Ong Songu said they went to like, they said they went to Chicago and they said they went to an amusement park. I don't know what amusement park there is in Illinois. I know there's a Six Flags there. I wonder if they went to Six Flags. But uh, he said, he, he like listed all the stuff they did. Um, <gasps> Songu, Songun. And Daniel all went to the Rosemont sign. Like, it's like this big waterfall thing. It's like, I don't know if it's called a waterfall, but it's like a sack of rocks, right? And there's like water coming out of it. And so they took a picture there, like those three members, and uploaded that to the fan cafe. And my friends and I saw that. And I think it came about kind of as a joke, like we should try to take a picture too there. But then the idea got me really excited and then I was like, oh my gosh, we should. We were all like, we should, we should go try to recreate their picture. And we did. <laughs> it's such a like, I don't know what to call it. Like it's like, it's not lame, but it's like dorky maybe. But um, I really wanted to do that. <laughs> And I'm really happy they also really wanted to do that, and I'm happy we were able to. So we went after the concert, like right after the concert. We were driving, we said like, because we weren't able to before the concert, so after the concert we were like, we have to go there. And so let me tell you about this little sign thing, right? It's, it's like at the corner of an intersection, right? And there's literally no way to get there. Like, it has sidewalk. It doesn't look like it has sidewalk. Like, I thought it was literally just on the side of the street. And I was wondering when one one took it, I was like, did they like park on the side of the road? Like, were they not supposed to and climb up there? Like, what the heck? But no, it does have like a narrow sidewalk on the edges. But there, there's nowhere to like park or anything. Like, you have to get there by foot. So we had to park across the street. We parked at the McDonald's, walked up, did one crosswalk, then did another crosswalk until we got there <laughs> and then um there were three of us right and we were trying to take like two and two the pictures but then we found this crowd of some women that were like also there to take pictures um and they were like looking at us while we were trying to get our picture and i don't know because my friend talked to them not me because i was on the rock um they like took one of them agreed to take the picture for us and my friend was like telling them to hold it exactly where she was holding it. Um, my friend Katie is a photography genius. She got the angle like really, really, really similar to the angle 101 did. And yeah, so they took the picture for us, all three of us, and that, I'm really thankful they did that. When we got off the rocks, we were like, thank you so much. And then we offered to take pictures for them, but they were doing like a full on shoot. Like the woman took off her shorts and she had like a swimsuit on and she got on the rocks and they, they started a whole like like legit photo shoot. <laughs> but I'm really grateful they helped us out. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say. So yeah, that picture is really cute. Um, I posted it on Twitter, might post it to Instagram. I don't know if it's gonna get like taken down or something because we're not supposed to share fan cafe pictures. Hi! I've been talking about you a lot. <laughs> and hi, oing. <laughs> I've been, um, you're not supposed to post fan cafe stuff, but that picture, the pictures from the US tour have been everywhere, like on Twitter and Instagram, and they haven't gotten taken down. 
so I don't I guess I'm okay <laughs> but I don't know yeah um thanks Ashley I hope I'm fine too um so I might post it on Instagram too it's currently my wallpaper because it's just so cute like I'm so happy um, we didn't get a chance to go to downtown Chicago just because it was such a journey. Like I said, driving in Illinois is the worst, and driving in Chicago is level 9,000. Like, it's the worst thing. There's so much traffic at all times, and the streets are really narrow, and the streets have so many potholes. My poor tires are all beat up. Like, we, I honestly didn't want to go there because it was just so much of a struggle to get there. Um, so we kept talking about it, like we kept saying we have enough time to go there, but we ended up just staying within like the area, uh, within Rosemont, you know. Um, we did go pretty far out to a shopping center earlier in the day. Um, and Oh Sung Hee's GF took us to Culver's, which she called a Midwestern delicacy. <laughs> After she called it that, I was like, okay, we gotta go there. <laughs> it was really good. I had like a chicken sandwich and it had pickles in it. I never thought of putting pickles in a chicken sandwich. I don't know why. My brother was like, why are you shocked by that? I was like, I just never thought of that. And the fries were really good. And I tried the custard there. It was really, really good. Um, so I'm happy we went there. And it was cool to do something like... <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I agree. It was good. So it's cool to do something. She said like a lot of people in the Midwest, like that's like their place to chill out. She said that's their like, let's treat ourselves place. So it was cool to go there. Um, if anyone's curious, the pizza place my brother and I went to, it was Lo Marat Lou Marati's. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. And it's like 20, 15 minutes from like downtown Chicago. They still call it Chicago there, but it's like technically something else, but they still call it Chicago. Um, yeah, all of Illinois that I traveled to called itself Chicago, although it wasn't, <laughs> which is weird. It's sort of like here in Maryland, we call Maryland, DC and Virginia, we call it DMV. So we're always saying like DMV this, DMV that. I guess it's kind of like that. Like they just like Chicago, the whole region close to Chicago in Illinois. Um, Maybe like that. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, Alyssa, since you're here, maybe you can help me with more things to talk about. Because I feel like I have so much to talk about, but I'm very disorganized right now. I don't know what to talk about. Um, I told them about, like, Jisung being beautiful and amazing. And, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was three hours. It was definitely... It was three hours of performing. Like, we had two or three VCRs, and that was the only, like, break they had. But then the members, since they had, like, solo stages and unit stages, they kept going, like, in and out, you know, to change. So it was nonstop. Like, it was it was a packed show. We got a lot of content. But that was also really nice. Oh, my gosh. The encore kind of scared me because um, they performed Wanna Be My Baby in the really cute baseball uniforms. And they had been like waving and stuff, and they were like, okay, this is our last song, and they left. But, um, and so, but we knew there was an encore, right? And we were chanting 101, 101, and stuff. But it was like, it felt like forever. And I don't know, I feel like other times I've chanted for a con an encore at concerts, it hasn't felt that long. I feel like it was really long for 101. But maybe that was just me, because I was like, like, I was like so hyped the whole concert, and suddenly there was nothing on stage. Maybe that made me feel like that. Um, and then the encore song was light. They changed, oh, it probably took forever because they were changing their outfits completely. They were like wearing like the pants and the baseball jerseys, then they changed into the light, the light outfits from like the music video not exactly the ones from the music video because like Dehui wasn't wearing the shorts but like but like those kinds of outfits they changed into those and did light and it hit me like oh my gosh they hadn't sung light yet like what the heck <laughs> and light oh my gosh I was since we had that little break like chanting for an encore I suddenly had a lot of energy and also because I was like, wow, I really just sat through a whole 101 concert. Not sat, I was standing the whole time. I really just stood through a whole 101 concert. I was screaming top of my lungs for all of light, all of it. 
when Jehwan's Do You Feel the Same, I was like, like this, like swinging my body so hard. <laughs> That's another thing. After, so DJ's, I mean, Jisung's DJ performance was like towards the middle ish. And that gave me my second wind. Like that, after that, I was even more hype and excited for all the performances. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Just let me read. I saw some comments that I didn't get to. Uh, talk about how short Songun is. Songun is so small. I bet he was so cute. That's another thing. The members are so cute. <laughs> Jihoon is a precious child. Woojin is adorable. Seeing Woojin dance in person is amazing. Amazing, amazing. That was amazing. Amazing. During Kangaroo. I, I felt like a proud mom watching him. Oh my gosh. Jin Young is so beautiful. He's a beautiful child. He did really well for his solo stage. Um, I was a little uncomfortable because he showed like his backside and stuff. It was a little weird. But um, people loved it. <laughs> um, that's another thing. They did a lot of like sexy things. Like um, YERXMS here on YouTube went to the solo show. And she had told me about the Boyo stage. She was like, you're gonna die at that. Because she said it was like, she implied it was like really sexy. And oh my gosh, they were on the floor. Like, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that was a thing. Oh yes, Sangun's solo dance was so nice. Oh my gosh. All the solo dances were so nice because the members, you know, it was just them. And like them dancing in their style, that was so cool to see. Oh my gosh. Someone did We Don't Talk Anymore by Calvin Harris and Selena Gomez. That's the song he danced to. And then Guanlin danced to Freaky Friday. And that was <laughs> I was just talking about the Boyo stage. Yeah, that was a lot. Oh my gosh. Um yeah. <laughs> but um Guanlin's Freaky Friday stage, that was it was really cute. Like, he was going for, like, cool, but it was really cute. Um, because Freaky Friday, it's a weird song to me. It's like, the chorus is catchy, but I don't like the song. Especially the version. Is that the only version? I don't like when, like, Ed Sheeran, DJ Khaled, and Kendall Jenner are on it. It seems like a mess of a song. Um, but he didn't, like, play any of that for his little stage. Um, but he was doing his dance to that, and... It was so cool because Guanlin doesn't get a lot of spotlight. It was so cool to see him have his little solo stage to a song that he was visibly into. Like he was mouthing the words as he danced. He seemed really into it. So besides Jisung, I really think Guanlin's solo stage was my favorite. <gasps> Daniel's modern dance. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Back for the beautiful album, the album with Beautiful Nothing Without You, for the showcase. They did, like, Daniel had his solo stage where he did his modern dance. But seeing it in person, amazing. Oh, my gosh. It really is beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Daniel is so weird to me because he's attractive and he's silly. And he's, like, when he was dancing like that, it seemed magical, for real. The way he, like, you, 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 I don't know how to explain it. I was going to say you guys know, but you guys weren't there. But, uh... <laughs> I don't know, his modern dance is magical. It's really, really beautiful. And I can't believe I saw it in person. I really saw it in person. Like, um, the school I work at, one of my kids invited me to their ballet recital. And just seeing that was amazing to me. Like, seeing her do her spins and do her lances, jumps, whatever that's called. Like, that's amazing. Like, just classical dance in general is, like, amazing to me. And then, so seeing, so that was already pretty cool. And then the fact that it was like Daniel doing it made it like even cooler and stuff. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. All the solo stages were cool. I don't know what else to talk about. <sighs> Sungwoon is so cute, by the way. He was like really milking the crowd. Like when it was her turn, his turn just to speak. He like purposely put the towel around his head and he was like asking the crowd to cheer more. 
So cute. <laughs> He's adorable. Dehui was really cute. Dehui smile. <sighs> sunshine. Sunshine. He's so cute. Om is so charming. So charming. He really is like princely. Like, oh my gosh. He's so charming. He, his posture is like really upright. And he's really like, I don't know what else to say besides charming. He's, he's a full prince. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, a prince. I know it sounds weird. Uh, um, what else? What can I say? I'm trying to think what else to say for the other members. Um, Jin Young seemed really relaxed. Like, Jin Young, you know, on lots of, like, TV shows and stuff, he's always, like, nervous and stuff. Um, but at the show, he was really relaxed. That's another thing. All the members were really giddy. Like, they were all constantly laughing. They were, like, they seemed like they had a lot of energy. And I think it's because they've been here in the United States for a while. Like, the San Jose concert was, like, a week ago or something. They've been here a while, so I think their bodies have adjusted to, like, the time here. And so that's why they were, like, they looked energized for this, like, for this show. Um, because, like, back when I saw Shiny, they seemed really tired. Because they had, like, a really packed schedule then, and, like, 101 also has, like, this schedule. But Shiny, like, you could tell Shiny was, like, tired back when I saw them two years ago. But 101 was really energized. And I think it is because they've been here for a while now. Like, I think they've, like, their bodies adjusted, you know? Um, yeah, they were all so giddy. Um, I got to see Jihoon's Jojang in person. That was really cool. Um, they were doing, like, this selfie time thing, which was, like, the camera would just close in really close to one, like, some of the members. And so, um, for Jihoon's, he did, like, like, after he did his little, like, pose, he did, like, the Jojang. That's really cool. <laughs> Like, he's done it a million times, and I feel bad for him. I wonder if he's sick of it. Like, everywhere he goes, he has to do it, like, ten times. Um, at the show, he only did it the one time, and then during Wanna Be My Baby, they that's part of the choreography, so I think he did it there. But he didn't do it too often. But, uh, but I did get to see it in person, and that's really cool because, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Jihoon is so cute. Oh my gosh, so cute. He's so cute. Um, I really don't know what else to talk about. I, there's probably like a billion things I'm missing out. I'm, like, I'm leaving out, but I don't know what to talk about. Minhyun! I haven't talked about that. Okay, so Minhyun... First of all, his solo stage, he was, mm-mm, uh, too much. <laughs> like what I said about the Boyo stage, too much. Um, he was really going for like the sexy concept, um, <laughs> which just, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so Minhyun, before the concert started, I was telling my friends, I'm about to see one-fifth of New East. <laughs> because I've loved New East since their debut. Right? And New East, because unfortunately, you know, they did go through this whole not being popular thing, right? So I was never going to have the opportunity to see them and stuff. And I was like, it hit me like four hours before the concert. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to see a fifth of New East. So seeing Minhyun was really special. That was really, I think, I don't know how to describe this, but I think I was most awestruck or like starstruck about him like when he was on the right side of the stage closest to me during the introductions I was legit like staring at him for a minute and I'm sorry about that but I was legit just looking at him because I was like that's Minhyun like that's Minhyun right in front of me oh my gosh and he you know standing all gentleman because <laughs> his character in like 101 is like you know he has to be like church boy you know like he is a good guy you know but like I'm just saying in New East he was able to show a lot more of him being silly and stuff but like in 101 
anytime they're like on a show or something they're always playing him up to be like the nerdy church boy you know like i don't know if you guys get the same mental picture when i say that as a picture in my head but that's the best way i can describe it with words but um but yeah but seeing him was like like i was more starstruck than seeing like i wasn't really starstruck seeing the others but seeing him i guess because the other members you know i've only known them I've only known of them since Produce 101, but since Minhyun is someone I've supported since 2012, it was a little different. And, yeah. Um, what else to say? Well, Alyssa's saying that she saw one-sixth of Hot Shot. <laughs> um, yeah. I really don't have anything to say besides that. And also, I think I did get to see a lot of the members. I did enjoy it very well. I enjoyed all the stages. I was cheering for everyone, but uh, not gonna lie, for Jisung it was ten times more. Um, and like I said, I tried sometimes to focus on other people, but then Jisung kept grabbing me. And um, another thing I want to talk about was him and Daniel. So you know, always when 101 is standing, if you guys see enough content of them, you know. Jisung and Daniel are always like next to each other and that was really cool to see in person too because they would be having their own little conversations like throughout everything because that's how they are and that was like so sweet to see like because Jisung and Daniel have known each other for a long time being in the same company and all being trainees together and it was cool to see like two best friends who have achieved their dream together and you're there like witnessing them living their dream I, I don't know i got really emotional suddenly thinking about that um <laughs> yeah like you can tell they're so close in person you can tell they're like <sighs> anything daniel does jisung like thinks it's like adorable and he's like smiling and like laughing at him um same with sungwoon sungwoon was like at the other side of jisung a lot and Jisung and Sungwoon also seem really, really close. Like, they seem like they they were always smiling and laughing at each other, too. Like, when Sungwoon was milking, like, the attention he was getting for being cute, Jisung was, like, laughing so hard. Yeah. Hmm. Is there anyone I haven't talked about much? I hope not, but is there... <gasps> Jaehwan. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Jaehwan, I just want to say his voice, top notch, top notch, top notch. He's an incredibly talented vocalist. His parts in Kangaroo are my favorite. Um, and his solo, his solo was, I think for the song, Edom or whatever, that song from the I Promise You album, I think his solo was like singing the first verse of that. Um, that was so surreal to hear his voice so clear and everything oh my gosh and he really like proved you know like yeah this is i have this thing i get why he's so cocky now because he's so cocky. <laughs> this is you know he says he's like i'm the main da dancer i'm the main singer i'm the main visual and like it's a joke but like um his singing really is incredible like he's incredible like he signed with cj entertainment i think now um he definitely, I, I think his future's bright for his um, singing career. Um, yeah. And you know, like if you watch Produce 101, you know, he was the one trainee, he was one of the trainees without a company. And like his voice was definitely strong enough that it carried him all the way to being part of 101. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I don't know much to say, much else to say about Johan just because like his parts and songs are my favorites because it sounds so nice right so that's when i would be like really screaming singing along like i said in light when he says do you feel the same at one point i was screaming so loud like my eyes were all like tensed and i was like do you feel the same <laughs> but yeah he's really funny like he's really funny during his closing and like closing comment he just said like a bunch of like adjectives in english he was like amazing fantastic beautiful like you just said a bunch of things which um k-pop artists always do since they don't really know um more complex english 
But I don't know, something about the way he says it was just really funny. Because like Guan Lin was saying, the crowd was beautiful. He was like, Chicago, you're beautiful. Winnables, you're beautiful. And um, that I was just like, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I'm so... <sighs> so yeah, I don't know. Oh my gosh, it's been over an hour now. Wow, thank you guys. I see that five people are watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh my gosh, that's like weird. I really thought no one was gonna like join in and I was like, hope I can think of stuff to talk about. Um, I'll be turning it off soon just because um, more family will be coming back soon and it'll get louder. But um, is there anything else you guys want me to like talk about? Any questions you have or anything? Those of you who are here. Um, I really don't know what else to say. Um, just a lot happened. Um, it was really fun, and I'm really happy I was able to go. Um, you know, it was a lot of effort going into this. It was a lot of stress just getting the darn ticket, a lot of stress with the driving, but I really think it was worth it because look at my smile right now. Like, I feel so good. So good. So I think it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Would do again. <laughs> What I kept saying at like at the very end after they performed light, they kept saying, We'll see you again. They're like, We'll see you again. And that I wonder if they mean like because you know they said, Do you remember the first time we met? Which technically would be the concert. That's the first time we've ever seen them in person. But I think they meant like they meant like produce one oh one, right? The first time we knew of them. So I think because of that, maybe they mean we promise to see you guys again means they'll have another like comeback you know which we know they're gonna have another comeback because they're being overworked so much to take advantage of the popularity they have so we know they're gonna have another comeback before that contract ends um so i wonder if that's what they meant because like you know one to one <laughs> you know the yeah 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 sorry just, I am really happy I was able to go. I feel like this concert, um, I don't know, I feel like this one compared to other concerts I've been to was just really, really special. It was really, um, because you know, I've known them, I've known of them since Produce 101 and stuff. Like I've seen them as trainees. I've seen them earn their position now. And I think that whole aspect made all of this like way more emotional and way more important to me, you know. And Jisung, I've loved Jisung since that 10 out of 10 performance. And seeing him in person was really magical. It was, <laughs> I don't know, literally the happiest night of this year. I don't think anything can top it. It's, it was amazing. I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm so happy the concert itself went well. Buying the ticket was a mess. Driving was a mess. But I'm so happy there at the venue, the moment I got into the venue, the moment I left the venue, all of that went perfectly. So I'm really, really happy. Really, really happy. Um, okay, that is it. Um, Alyssa said that they will probably have a goodbye concert. Probably will. And ugh, I cried when Jisung got um, eighth place and was became a part of 101. Like I legit cried. I was with on the phone with Katie, watching it live, like the live stream, and I cried. And um, I was <laughs> close to tearing up last night, but didn't. And um, did tear up a little in the car, but. Um, yeah, when we get to that point that Alyssa said, I think I will be crying again. <laughs> well, let me read Sam's comment. Out of fertilizer grows roses. Mm. It was nice seeing you too, Alyssa. Oh my gosh, it was so nice to meet you. Um, I don't know when we'd ever be able to see each other again, but I'm so glad we were able to see each other, have so much fun, and experience 101, which is like, I think, the main thing that brought us closer. So that's really cool. 
um, or that brought us close. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, I really can't think of anything else. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to say that the VCRs were so cute. Um, the first one, it had like a Fifty Shades of Grey parody kind of thing, which mm, not my thing. But then they had like I think they had one other one I can't remember. And then there was one that was like scientists, which Y E R X M S had told me about. Um, so it was Dehui Sungun and Ji Sung, and that was so cute. I haven't seen any clips of it because I know there's clips like on YouTube of it like some fans had recorded it at the Seoul concert but I hadn't seen any but I knew of it because Jisung posted on the fan cafe pictures of him in that like makeup and outfit and he looked so cute there and it was so cool seeing that VCR um, and it was like trying to get that crowd hype so it was like telling us to scream and it was like it was like all mimed like they were all like making signs but it had subtitles in English um, and they were like saying like scream louder and then we screamed again and I was like no no louder 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 and stuff you know it was cute it was really cute Dehui's hair oh my gosh adorable and Sungmoon's smile with that makeup oh my gosh he looked he looked precious and then yeah 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 I forget what Sungmoon's tagline was Dehui was doctor of love Jisung was doctor of intelligence or something and I forget what Sungmoon's was because I was too focused looking at him at that point <laughs> but um that was a cute VCR I think at the end some point they had like another VCR that was like showing their trainee days like produce one one doctor of passion maybe for someone I think so yeah I think I saw passion but, but just those VCRs were cute they were really really cute so um for Daniel and Ong's unit stage, they did show the uh, like in the soul concert at the soul concerts. They showed like messages written by them. They showed those on the screens. Um, bye, Ashley. And I promise I'm about to be done. <laughs> but thank you. Um, one last thing about the like screens. Um, they were translating all the songs. Every single song that was performed on the screen, there was some sort of graphic translating the songs. Every single song. That was really, really cool. And that... I, it was cool. Like, I shouldn't be this shocked by it, because I feel like that should be a thing. Like, these artists, you know, don't speak English, and here the majority do speak English. Although, you know, like, it's true that, like, music surpasses the borders of language, but... I think it was really cool because like I saw like parents there with their like kids like I saw like a father behind me with like a teenage daughter with it and like her friends and like for him you know it was probably nice to like be reading what the lyrics are you know like I feel like that was a really neat thing and really cool and I think that should be a thing. Just like Shouther60 says that English interviews and like Chinese interviews should be a thing to an official like goods I think that should be a thing at concerts whatever country you go to put translations for them in their language you know I think that was really cool that one one did that and I hope they do that for the other countries they go to too but they like do that and it was cool because it wasn't just like a block of text of like the translations to the lyrics it was also a graphic that went with like the theme of the song so that was really cool too yeah okay now I am really done. I've said everything I can think of. It's been over an hour. Thank you so much for staying, um, for watching this much or however much you watched. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just so happy. I love 101. Support 101 if you don't and you're watching this or if you're watching this and you do, you're doing the right thing. They're the people to support. <laughs> okay, bye.